Hey, welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you, and thanks for checking out the channel. Hope everybody's doing fantastic out there. Appreciate you guys tuning on. If you guys could subscribe, that'd be great. Uh, we got Miami Heat preseason action. We'll be get going on Sunday. We'll be boots on the ground for that one. Very excited to see uh, the Heat back in action. They are uh, about underway. As I record this, probably hitting the practice court uh, right about now on a Saturday. Uh, a couple of things that were of note on Friday's practice. One was the thing we were all worried about or wondering about, I should probably say, is Tyler Hero and Jaime Jaquez Jr., what was going to be uh, the status of them. They got some work in on the court. Neither is confirmed for Saturday. That news could change as uh, Spo and, and uh, whoever speaks to the media. Uh, that could get, you know, that could change. But I will say, listening to Jaime and listening to Tyler, one, it sounded sounded like Jaime was dealing with something a little bit more, not serious, but more serious than what Tyler was. Tyler sounds like he went balls to the wall in training camp and he said he was sore, but he even said that he was like, you know, I think he implied that he'd like to and would be ready for Sunday preseason action. Jaime seemed a little bit more apprehensive in his answers. Um, you know, the heat. they like to, to give you nothing when it comes to this stuff. He had to get an MRI just for an extra precaution on it, as I guess Tyler did not. So it sounds like if I had to guess, if I had to guess, guess that we would see Tyler tomorrow, but not necessarily Jaime, which I think is definitely important because as Spo said, you know, he wants to see Jimmy Bam, Terry Tyler all together. I think we know Jaime has just such a, a chameleon-like ability to fit in with anybody. So I'm I'm not as worried, and and Jaime definitely did not. You know, he he worked through some things, and the groin was an issue. I think at one point for him last year. So let him take his time. Um, I think if anything, if there was one person on this team I wasn't worried about fitting in with anybody, it's Jaime Hawkins Jr. I just think that. He is. He just knows to be in the right spots and be not. And it's not that Tyler doesn't, because obviously Tyler's been in the league more. But I think there is a there is an element to the number of touches the starting lineup's going to get, where everybody's going to be at. Um, it's it's very much seems like Nikola Jovic has the final spot on lock. So for all the the thoughts that maybe a lot of jobs were up for grabs, it doesn't seem like really that many jobs are up for grabs, especially in the starting unit. It seems like the Heat have their starting unit. So Tyler Hero being uh, ready and good to go, I think is a little bit more significant just for a little action than Jaime. Mind you, they're probably only going to play a, a half of basketball as it is. I, I would expect it to go similarly to the first game where the starters get about 18, 16 to 18 minutes and then by the time we get to the second half, second unit will be in there, and then we'll get to the summer league guys. Maybe we'll see a little bit more Kalel where that is uh, that to me would be, uh, I guess the the most interesting thing to keep an eye on is one is Tyler Hero healthy. Two, I don't think that affects Pella Larson too much if Jaime doesn't play. If Jaime does also play, then what does that do for Pella? And then, of course, does Kalel Ware play a little bit earlier? So those are those are the things that you're really looking at in this next game. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the starting unit moves. I think we all saw a Heat offense that felt like it was going faster or was trying to get the pace up. I, I know that um, you know Cooper Moore from the Heat said that actually last year's preseason against Charlotte was the fastest, was even faster than this. So it is preseason. Take it for what it's worth. Charlotte's a little bit of a, a quirky team. This uh, this matchup against the Pelicans, they're also kind of a weird team. We talked about this uh, a little bit earlier in the week. They uh, they don't really have a, a true blue center as their anchor. They got Daniel Tice playing center for them. They're obviously dealing with some drama with the Brandon Ingram thing. Um, so... But they also have, you know, revenge season Zion, who had a very good year last year and then, of course, got hurt in the playoffs, which was really unfortunate for him. 
So they're a fun team to to definitely check out for this Miami Heat team. But wanted to get to something that Bam Adebayo said. Now, if you guys didn't see the media session, it's up on the Heat's uh, YouTube and website. But Bam Adebayo and Eric Spolstra did the media session together, which is not something I can ever remember. I've seen players do it together. I've seen... Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry do media sessions together. Of course, Dwayne Wade and LeBron James famously did media sessions together. I've seen Bam do it with Tyler Hero or Gavins. I've seen this happen before. Player, player. Cannot remember a time where I've seen coach and player do media together. I thought it was kind of cool. The And Spo talked about this a little bit. The the leadership and the way they can move the locker room is going to go with Jimmy Bam and Spo and how it infiltrates everybody. But I thought this was a really cool thing. And Spo, you know, the the three-point thing has definitely been a point of emphasis for him. I honestly don't even think it's going to be an overthought thing for Bam. I think he's going to let those puppies fly. I think that he's just got the confidence from range out there. Um but Spo said some games it'll be two, some games it'll be five. It depends how he's feeling. It depends how the defense is going to attack it, what kind of rhythm he's in, all that type of stuff. So pretty cool to see these two in lockstep doing a media session together. I don't know what the reasoning was for that. Maybe they left at the same time. It didn't look like it was a huge contingency of media that was there. But it was cool to see them both kind of knock it out together and you know bam's there uh you know doing the three-point celebration when uh when spo is talking about it so i thought that was clear but bam actually said something that i thought was very interesting because he was being asked about nikola jovich and excuse me he had a he was asked um by cooper moorhead about nico's growth and Bam had a very cool answer on this about how Nico is going to fit into the starting unit. Because we talked about this the summer. He's a bit of a wild card. I don't really know what to expect because the kid's talented as all hell. He's now growing into this this uh, this monstrosity at 21 years old. Like he is just, you know, what did he say? He's up to 240. He looks every bit of it. And I mean that in a good way. I mean, I'm, I'm like, he looks he looks size-wise like he's not going to be pushed around. I don't think he's going to be pushed around. And you could just tell the growth that he had as rookie year. The kid takes his training very, very seriously. But I just love when the pass. I just, I cannot stress enough how much I love when the basketball is in his hands. And I think one of the things that's cool about this Heat team, if everybody lets it kind of rip around, I think you have a lot of guys who could set other people up. Um, and Bam had an interesting comment to Cooper where he was saying that he expects Nikola Jovic to get his first career triple-double this year, if not two, and that it could be a regular staple for this Heat team to get a bunch of triple-doubles. Man, I expect Nico to have one or two triple-doubles uh, just because... You know, he pushes the pace. We get out and run. Uh, obviously, he can make the right play every time. So, you know, I, I expected a lot of us to have triple doubles this year. Uh, you know, everybody come with the right mindset. And we play together. I love this from Bam Adebayo, talking about Nico's ability to get people involved. Now, look, you have a, I think for me, if I were to look at Nico, what is the thing that is going to be the hardest for him to get in a triple double? I feel like it's assists. Because I feel like I don't know how many times he's going to really have the opportunity to set up the offense. But the plan really could be, because I think we all look at him and his strength is, get the rebound and go. That could be the different element here, is that there's just more trust in the, the, the young big man to just get the ball, go, make a look at the offense, find a shooter, and and let it rip. But this is a roster... Interestingly, if everybody were to get triple doubles, <clears throat> mind you, in Heat history, you do have the two, you have two out of the top three on this team. You have the triple double career leader, which is of course Jimmy Butler, 
So Jimmy Butler getting a triple double for the Miami Heat. He is twelve in the regular season, three in the playoffs. Uh, so not too much of an oddity for Jimmy Butler if he were to able to do it. He has the franchise lead over LeBron James. LeBron is second all time with nine triple doubles in Heat history. And then you have Bam, who could catch LeBron this year. He has seven career triple doubles. He's a regular season, by the way. Bam with one playoff career triple double, which was in the closeout last year or two years ago, excuse me, against the Milwaukee Bucks. So you could check those two off. They've done it in their career. Tyler has one career triple double. So, and I don't think an impossible thing. I think that he would love to see. He's another one where, like, all right, does does Tyler have that feel of setting up his teammates like that, moving the ball and trying to find shooters and getting people involved? Because Tyler, pretty good rebounder for his position. Um, Ty- Tyler Hero is not a guy where getting rebounds. He's a he's scared to 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 go after the the basketball. Tyler Hero, and I think everybody would think, oh, Tyler Hero, T Rex arms. Maybe that's no. He's Tyler Hero can get you some rebounds now. Like he's not a guy where it's a uh, it's something he's he's afraid. He's actually averaged five or more rebounds every year except his rookie year for a guard like not too shabby for Tyler he's uh he's I think capable of throwing that up every now and then Terry Rozier has two career triple doubles uh of course a career that's spanning many years so I don't know if Bam was necessarily referring to Terry in this case but I think I think it's possible I think that that this is a roster that definitely is capable if they find each other and and I think that's going to be the key for this team right don't slow it down don't allow double teams don't allow these teams to bog you down whip that ball you find the ball move trust everybody else um that is going to be a very telling thing for the opportunities for this club to go out there and do what bam's talking about because triple double is cool man i was not one of these people that hated on russell westbrook for the triple double like i love Triple doubles are 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 awesome. And you have, you know, like I said, two of the franchise career leaders could bam tie LeBron this year in possibly getting a uh in possibly matching or maybe even passing. Can't rule it out. It's uh let me see. Bam, what is the most amount of triple doubles he's gotten in a season? The most he's had is three. Three in the regular season, and that was 1920. So that was Jimmy and Bam's first year playing with one another. He got two the next season, and he had two last season. So most likely, he could tie LeBron James this year um, if you wanted to add in, you know, playoff ones. Although I didn't, I don't know if I counted LeBron's. Does LeBron have any Heat playoff career triple doubles? I feel like he does. Now that I think about it, I feel like he did two finals games. He might have two. So if you wanted to get cute about it, I think LeBron's really like at 11. Let me see. LeBron with the Miami Heat. Pfft. This guy with, hey, with the Heat, he was good. Three career, three, four, five career triple doubles. So if you really wanted to talk about it, he has 14 all time with the Miami Heat. And I believe Jimmy is, uh, I believe Jimmy's 15 all time because Jimmy has three playoff career triple doubles with the Heat. If you wanted to get down to that, to brass tacks with that. So, good players. But for regular season, which is usually what anybody goes for these franchise leaders, nobody ever puts playoffs in there. Um, yeah, Bam could catch LeBron in regular season triple doubles, and Nico still looking for his first career triple double. But I found an interesting comment from Bam that he is that much faith in Nikola Jokic. I think everybody is uh, developing a lot of faith in the uh, the young power forward for the Miami Heat. I know there's been a lot of talk about, hey, we got to get Bam to the four. We... Look, trust me when I tell you, nobody hates positional. Uh, assignments more than than Eric Spolstra. He is Mr. Positionless. He hates these titles. So I think he's just looking for five guys who can play dynamic basketball together. And he's used that word. Like he has said, Bam and, and Nikola Jovic, he feels like there's a dynamic element to those guys. And certainly an ability to 
get rebounds and share the basketball like that and find your teammates quickly is a is a is a big step in the uh, in the right direction for this team's uh, ability to produce points.